Happy Halloween from the middle of the, uh, I can't speak, African bush. <laughs> uh, welcome to tonight's very special wild dog themed Halloween Animal World Live. <laughs> Hello, 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 and welcome. As you can see, UK welcome, and I. Welcome, guys. UK, your ears are a bit fluffy, I think. Oh, no. There you go. Yeah. She's an unhealthy wild dog, UK. <laughs> oh. But I have an ear notch, I'm cool. Yeah. <laughs> you, yes, I don't have an ear notch, I'm in perfect health. Mm -hmm. yeah. So welcome everyone, happy, happy Halloween. Um, and as I have said, today is a very special episode. We are going to be launching something very, very cool during this Animal Live, Animal World Live. Um, but of course, but without further ado, we're going to get in to what we need to talk to you about. Talk to you about. Um, I'm just going to say hello to, we've got here, Ricky TJS with us, Rosalind, KDG, Peter Phipson, Amanda Fip, Fip, Philipson, sorry, Carol, Barbara, Carla, Boo, Mars, Stephanie, uh, Linda, Vicky, Vumpy, hello Vumpy, <laughs> um, Catherine and Rosalind, yes. So um, just if you are watching on Facebook, unfortunately, um, if you want us to read your comments, etc., um, maybe... Well, maybe you can, can do YouTube, I can do Facebook, Vim, what do you think? I can, I can open. Okay, we'll do that, we'll do that, we'll do both. Because um, you got YouTube on that one, that's fine, I'll go into Facebook, okay. yeah. Cool, uh, perfect, so we make sure we don't miss any of your wonderful comments and questions. Um, but before we go further into um, the wild dogs, um, I've actually just had a brainwave, but I'm going to get to it just now. <laughs> uh, that's that's on UK no, again. No, no, uh, but we're going to go see what's hap been happening on the live cams this week. So what's up first, Vimpy? Oh, Pridelands uh, at the Ellie cam right in front of how uh, the house, um, and that is of course. Oh, it's one of our Hello. lovely resident bulls. <laughs> Oh, it's so incredibly green. Very, very green. It's Still can't a, get over it. I know, really how, and, and com compared to um, how dry it was a few few days ago. <laughs> what is he doing? He's scratching, he's scratching the he's feet scratching underneath his the feet. Foot. Yeah, um, that's so cute. Here we go. Let's have a look. Oh, no, I'm listening to myself. <laughs> how do I see the comments on Facebook? I am a Luddite. Swipe left to reveal comments. There we go. Hello, Gertrude. Hello, Wendy. Hello, Ashley. Um, and nice to have you with us on Facebook. First time we're doing Animal World Live on both Facebook mm. and YouTube simultaneously. Very so cool. exciting, exciting times. Um, okay, so um, let's keep going. Let's go and see what we've got next. UK, you keeping an eye on the YouTube Yo. chats and comments? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's the gang. Now, uh, they've been around. They helped us find Lagatha. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, a day or two ago. They were, oh, oh and, pig, and a warthog. Um, so Lagatha arrived and the baboons, wah, wah, <laughs> wah, <laughs> shouting at her. Um, Wendy, I'm not sure. Uh, the sound is good on our side. Um, Mary, um, I'm not sure if there's a problem with the Facebook sound. I don't know if the guys can check, but I think it's all good. Uh, it might be on your side uh, there, Wendy. But always great to see baboons. They're such fascinating creatures. And, yeah. and the piggies. Look at the baby on A tiny baby. Tiny oh, it doesn't baby. want to get wet. Oh, it's going to get wet feet. Oh, dear, Mom. <laughs> now, of course, the, the social interactions amongst baboons are absolutely fascinating. Um, and uh, there's a lot of politics at play and uh, a lot of uh, conniving. Um, you can sort of jump social standing by making friends with the right big male baboon. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to cough quite shortly. Can I see? Ah, there we go. The smoke's blowing away. Um, <laughs> Hello, Alicia. Hello, Rosemary. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, very, very, very cool to catch up with baboons. And as I said, we've got a very exciting, you can hear I'm very excited. We're going to be talking very quickly. So let's see what's next. Oh, night time at Pridelands. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't. Can you see? Oh, yep. Uh, there we go. <laughs> it's a good thing 
he didn't bump the branch. And look at all that dust coming off him. Might be kicking the ground. Um, another one of the bulls. We've definitely been seeing um, less breeding herds now that it's rained. They've spread out quite a bit. So, but the any bulls are still being around in plethora. Uh, thank you, Alicia. Amazing, uh, just melts into the darkness. Oh, he's reversing. He must be fighting with another one. Yes, yeah, there we go. Not <laughs> often pushing each, other. pushing each other about. Some nice jovial uh, playing by the Ellie Bulls. Now, of course, as much as it is playing, it does sort of set the standard for uh, social hierarchy when they do get older and come into must. And uh, so very, very, very important to know how strong the opposition is. <laughs> Just don't push into the camera. That's yeah, all we are. That's the one thing, yeah. So obviously we've got to be very careful um, with the where we place cameras on mm. Pridelands just because of the amount of mm -hmm. elephants that are here. Yes, I would love it if you took a stump off the fire. Thank you, Zander. I'm going blind. Here we go. Oh, there's a proper little wrestle. Ah, who, oh, what's going on there? Bumblebee. Bumblebee. Um, if you want to get one of these cool shirts like we're wearing, uh, you just need to go onto the Painted Dog uh, Teespring store. Um, um, so it's, someone will pop up a link for Teespring shortly, probably Charles. Um, and uh, you can have a look there. That will be on YouTube, the link for Teespring. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, yeah, so that if you want to get a shirt, there's all sorts of other cool designs. Uh, Brian is an incredible designer. So there's a lot of very cool Painted Dog swag. You can definitely tell the difference between Brian's and mine, uh, Brian's are definitely a lot more professional. I just put a photo on a shirt and go painted dog TV. But yeah, we will be hopefully coming out with some Christmas, um, Christmas stuff for Christmas, some nice Christmas swag for everyone. So very, very cool. Uh, happy Halloween to you too, Della. Loving the cams. Thank you so much. Um, okay, let's have a look. Alicia, we, we have seen my bye bye in the Cubs on one of the cams last week, but yeah, they've been around. So, ah, piggies. Lots of piggies. Lots of piggies. There, I know in the wildlife estate and in town there's already piglets. We haven't seen any piglets out here. Or maybe they have been eaten by the leopards. Leopards love a piglet, so do lions. Mm -hmm. um, but hopefully we will be seeing some tiny piggies shortly. Oh, oh we're making a little wallow. <laughs> okay, very cool. Wow, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six piggies. Oh, look how comfy that look one is that. there. Oh, it's one. got the best spot. <laughs> now, of course, that does look really good, and there's important uses for that. Now, um, they, they cover themselves in mud, of course, to protect themselves from ectoparasites, ticks, mites. Uh, and then when that mud dries, those ectoparasites are encased in the mud and will fall off. Um, hello, Jill. Happy Halloween to you, too. Pam Lady was asking the how old that elephant was, actually, from the previous video. Ah. Pam, I would say those boys were in their early 20s, 25-ish, mid-20s. Um, yeah, so that's how old they were. There you go. That's there we right. go. <laughs> These guys look like they're, yeah, mid-20s, 25, 26, somewhere mm. around there. Mm -hmm. um, as they get older, they do get more difficult to age when they're in their sort of middle, middle years. Um, once they push over 40, 45, they get a little bit easier to age again. Um, wow. Well, for me at least. I know there's some <laughs> elephant experts out there who are able to age them uh, much more easily okay. than I. Okay. Also, question for warthogs. What kind of disease can they get? Warthogs, um, mm -hmm. they are actually carriers of foot and mouth disease. Mm. Um, and, um, well, they can be carriers of foot and mouth, but the, the biggest threat to, well, not threat, but problem with warthogs in this area is they are carriers of uh, TB. So even though most of the time the warthogs are not affected by TB, uh, they can transmit TB from through the red line. So the red line, we live inside the red line in Greater Kruger, there's TB, but some of the farms towards the mountain um, are TB free and that TB can get into mm -hmm. the animals. And that's unfortunately probably what happened to the lioness Ahahani, um, the mother of the four mm -hmm. cubs on Reed Spray. Um, we were still waiting for results. It takes quite a long time for those results to come through. But yes, so that's warthogs. She probably either got uh, TB, but she came TB free from Marikele National Park from either warthogs or kudu seem to be the two biggest carriers in this area. I don't want to mess, I've got, I have a special thing to scratch. 
Yeah, Rosalind, I think uh, there was a six warthogs here in the video. Yeah. There was a six warthogs as well. There you go. That's, we oh, that's good. There's a tickle there, but I don't want to mess up <laughs> my wonderful makeup. Um, anyway, uh, Alicia Trouble is doing very well. <laughs> Chloe is good. Ah, oh, thank you so much, Boo. That's uh, Thank you so mm. much. Okay, let's carry on quickly. We've got such a jam-packed show. We've got to keep going. What's next? Back at Pardons. Oh, it's me. <laughs> I have to put this in. Uh, it's me cleaning spiderwebs <laughs> off the camera. <laughs> Using my shirt. Here we go. Here we go. That's not a common sighting, nope. that close up on the cameras. Yeah, on this it's normally, high position it's camera. normally VM or Bavu <laughs> or, um, or, or someone else, but I did my. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> my little moment with the camera. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that was fun. Okay. You came back. I came back. That's enough of me. <laughs> Definitely enough of me. Um, oh, thank you so much for popping our Teespring. Uh, link up on Facebook, Liz. That's really appreciated. Um, so very, very cool. Hello, Sandri. Hello, Jeffrey. Barbara okay. has a question. Are yes. you be able to eat the animal that has a TV? Uh, yes, human beings can eat uh, animals that have TV. Um, I think, yeah. Well, our special guest, we're not going to tell you, what's he saying? Oh, you just don't eat the lungs. There we go. You just don't eat the lungs. <laughs> I was wondering what our special guest, <laughs> who's a surprise in the, in the corner, um, uh, was doing. Okay, um, do you have any more live cams, Vimpy? Oh, more. <laughs> ah, critter cam. This is at the back of the workshop. And we have Natal Franklin by the looks of things. So Vim noticed there's quite a well-used little animal path. When I say little animals, there's no big animals using it. This is inside mm -hmm. uh, our fenced area. So quite often the dwarf mongoose are around there. We've got a couple of diker. Oh, that's beautiful, that's so <laughs> seeing uh, an Atel Franklin up close and personal like that. Wonderful. Oh, nice one for the bird is. Yeah. Oh, is that it? Oh, sorry, VMP, I must heard you there. One more. One more. Let's okay. see. Let's have a look. Oh, all the Impala. Ooh. Many, many Impala. Aren't you feeling hungry now that you're a wild dog, Yuka, <laughs> looking at all the you Impala? Too, Brent. Yes, I am. You can I'm go hard hungry. now. Might start salivating. <laughs> Ooh, impala. Lots of impala. <laughs> oh, it's incredible that. I mean, I know reach bait got a little bit less. Ah! Whoa. And there comes uh, the rhinos as well. Um, isn't that awesome? I can't see which rhino that is. I can't see the ear notches clearly. Mm. But that is very, very cool. So the creator cam is not on the YouTube, hey? It's only I, I'm for not the sure. highlight. This is asking if the link for the Critter Cam is up. Is the link for Critter Cam up? I don't think so. No, no. Yeah. it's not a live cam. It's a it's a it's a static cam. It's very quiet. Mm. It's a, I think it's it's been up for about ten days. It's only mm. ever had it's like one a uh, one mongoose sighting, um, and one and and mm. and Franklin. And it is on the hangout bottom left hand corner. Um, there is Critter Cam. Um, okay, so yes, well, Boss Camp. It looks up though. Boss Camp's above. Oh, no, it's Seskan 2. Yeah, so Boss Camp is down. We do need to go up there and do some maintenance on it. Um, so it's substituting for, for, for Boss Camp on the Hangout. Hi, Alicia. Thanks so much. Um, uh, Alicia, you've been, uh, that has actually been on Game Drive with me on Roots oh, really? <laughs> many moons ago. Wow. Um, and she says, uh, lots of love from the little cold island of Guernsey. Oh. Um, well, nice to, nice to share <laughs> for you as well. You can take screenshots, Stella, wherever you would like. Yes, of course you can take screenshots. Okay, now, of course, uh, very exciting, and one of our favorite new add-ons here is that um, it's your videos and picture time. Now, if you would like to send us one of your videos and pictures to be featured on Animal World Live every Saturday night, um, you can do so by going onto the App Store or the Android Store and downloading the Painted Dog TV app. Uh, that is how you do it, and if you haven't yet, sis on you. <laughs> okay, so let's have a look. What's up first? I think it's from Cookie, um, Cookie B. Oh, Sable Alley, Botswana, August 2019. Oh, wonderful picture of a cattle egret on top of a hippo bull. Very cool. Yeah, lovely, lovely, yeah, lovely. Looking into cameras. Yes. Looks like he might want to charge you there, Cookie. Hopefully he didn't. <laughs> Hopefully he just ran 
um, for the water. Mm -hmm. Alicia, it's cold in Michigan. Yeah, I'm sure it is too. <laughs> okay, and then the next one is from Danny. Um, and uh, let's have a look. Oh, beautiful. Oh, Ngora Gora Crate. Oh, so Julie. Oh, sorry. Uh, Julie, Danny's next. This is from Julie. Um, Ngora Gora Crater, October 2019. Oh, that is a wonderful shot. It is incredible how tender a zebra <laughs> mare can be and how unfriendly a zebra stallion can be. Yes, what a wonderful, wonderful shot. Rachel says you look scary. I look scary. <laughs> yeah, that, now that's more scary. <laughs> okay, I think the next pick is from Daddy. <laughs> oh, nice. Bit of macro in Joburg, nice. Danny. Um, October. That's this month. Are we still in October? Yes, of course, it's, it's the 31st. Yeah. A bee on a flower I cannot identify. Looks like it might be a Venonia, but I'm not 100% certain. Mm. Um, but a beautiful, nice, nice work, Danny. Some nice uh, macro, macro photography there. And um, Yvonne, next. Ah, Yvonne Kruger, a nice big male lion. Oh, thank you so much, Mary. Um, yes, but another nice big male lion in November 2018. And I'm sure a lot of you are dying to be able to to get out here again and we'll be dying to have you with us and that is some of the stuff we're going to be chatting about mm -hmm. very exciting <laughs> things coming up um very very shortly <laughs> alicia brent oh, yes i'm dressed as my spirit animal the wild dog um and of course and speaking of wild dogs the last little uh, picture is from near vm's nephew um who got to uh, come with us on a very very <laughs> very, very fun and exciting uh, trip. Now, those three wild dogs are actually in the back of VM's Land Rover. Now, I can hear something. Right? Let me <laughs> put my collar on. There we go. Grant has found us, of course. It is Grant from EWT. I'm going to take this cheetah collar off because it's probably not sanitary. Um, this is my bye bye's collar, by the way, for anyone who was wondering. That is now off her. Um, okay. So, Grant, welcome. Thank you. It's been busy. It's been uh, one hell of a week, which you've alluded to a little bit. Yes. On, on last week's. Last week well, was crazy. Yeah. I nearly fell asleep during the show <laughs> after that day. Yo. Yeah, it, was a long, it was a long day, but some exciting stuff coming out of that. Which yeah, and we, we, we've now decided to have a plan, and I, I think we're all very excited about this. Um, and uh, that is, next month, from tomorrow, it's Painted Dog Month. That is it. The whole month of November is of going course, to be... Of course, I would like every day to be Of course. Painted, okay. <laughs> of it course. It should be, but we've got Painted Dog, Dog month, month coming up, which I'm excited about. So November will be Painted Dog Month. Um, we're going to be focusing on Painted Dogs for the whole month. All Animal World Lives will be focused on, uh, on Painted Dogs. Grant is going to be spending a lot of time with the pack, um, and hopefully you're going to be spending some time with some other packs as well. And, um, and uh, we've got some... Uh, little wild dog clips to just play while we're, while we're chatting, uh, just to get you guys excited. Uh, but I, I mean, it's been, it's been crazy. There's been a lot of danger for dogs in the last little while. Yeah, so unfortunately, a little bit of a benefit to the dogs is that the population is increasing and it's something that, or a question that people always ask, are the numbers increasing or is the population in Kruger going up, which it is. And that's fortunately led to an increase in population, but unfortunately led to an increase in the movement of wild dogs because they're wide ranging outside the boundaries of protected areas. Which is what brought us together last week in terms of catching the pack of wild dogs, dogs, which yeah. we had mentioned that we had tried for three months. 20, to try and catch. 27, 27 times. 28 we caught them. <laughs> yeah. 28th time they were managed to catch 100%. them. And in fact, you know, watching, watching the live show last week is... is a mention of the fact that it was unconventional using nets. It's, yeah. And just to reiterate that fact that we had tried to dart them on the ground, we had tried to dart them from the helicopter, and in fact the, the time that we put the call on, which enabled us to be able to track them and plan where we were setting the nets mm. up, that took four and a half hours of helicopter yeah. time and nine darts from nah. Joel, which you spoke about last week. Nine nah. darts from the air to get that nah. dog down. Now nah, guys, you got to remember, what is it, about 8,000 an hour? Yeah. 8,500 excluding that, to be exact. 
8,500 Rand, excluding that. So uh, just for the helicopter, just for the helicopter time. time. The vet, the time, uh, the time. Someone can someone put that into dollars for me quickly, and then pop it into my ear. Um, yeah, so so we just have that. So and that's and that's without vet time. And we're very lucky that we've got some incredible vets around here willing yeah, to willing step. To help. And even Jerry, you and know, Jerry, spoke about Jerry McDonald, yeah. where he helped out and everyone and pushed. And Jerry's brother Bruce, Bruce as well. We yeah. had a, a fixed wing plane up in the air, looking for the dogs and helping out with looking. As I came in to the show tonight with the, the VHF and telemetry, where you're trying to pick up the radio frequency, and you went up in the air as yes, well because yeah. I was on the ground last week. Trying I, to I, I got to use the doop 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 doop. So Ben's not just a presenter. Yeah. I've taught him a little bit over the years. <laughs> he knows how to track wild dogs now. So he. Painted Dog TV actually does fill in and, and help out. We all it's do. It's not just about the show. <laughs> exactly. We help out and oh. it was an epic day. But it was. It was, was a long day. A, three, I think Yerkes left at 3, 3.30 3, 3, 3, 3, we were, left, yeah. Which everyone knows how, t how tired you were last week. Your yeah, I was finished. So, yeah, but it was, it was worth it. It was. Um, so, so what do we got here? Um, we've got a, a little Wild Dogs on the Hunt insert. So let's play that and uh, get ready for the next step. got our first sighting of wild dogs on Prydens. Uh, they appeared at the eco training camp. Damn, oh, the guys in front of me can see it. Hold on, everyone. We're just going to try to stick with one of the dogs. The hunting, eh? Yeah. Isn't that cool? So that was actually here on Pridens, and that leads us to one of our favorite packs of dogs. Steffi, I know you're there, uh, and Kurt's probably with you. The Melita pack. <laughs> yeah, so funny enough, I mean, probably the perfect timing with, with me appearing on the show tonight, Bent, is that the Melita pack was actually seen yesterday in Southern Blue Canyon. Um, the, the alpha female that was collared with her pups, so you remember there was two adult females and their eight pups, they were collared, and they're still moving around um, the southern section of Blue Canyon and, and 
sort of just south of, of Reed Spray Space. Graham Reserve, yeah. But uh, more interestingly is, is recently, just before we, we moved that Melita pack was the fact that the, the male split off just before. And that was, of course, with, with you yeah. got the amazing photograph of the individual with, with the snare. snare. That, that was, was yeah, on Pridelands. Yeah, on Pridelands. And that was the split off of the, of the snare dog, which we managed to remove the snare. Now we do have... Um, three, four weeks ago now. We do have a little um, insert about that snare dog. So let's have a look. this dog for the last couple of weeks unfortunately haven't been able to catch up with them so the plan is to call them in onto a bait once they come in onto the baits then the, the vet will go them and, and remove the snare give it a go the wind is not ideal obviously with the wind direction coming in the one direction uh, they don't they don't hear the call as well, so but ideally they should settle down very soon um, and will give us a good opportunity this afternoon. So we'll give it a go. Thanks, Grunty. No worries. So you were lucky enough to be able to take the snare off that dog. Yes, so eventually after multiple months of trying again, we, we managed to catch up with the pack on, on Kapama mm -hmm. uh, with Dr. Rogers and remove the snare. And I mean, funny enough, once again, as coincidence, just before joining you live tonight, is that um, I got a sighting of, of, so it's essentially those males, males. were split off of the Melita pack before we relocated them. And, and that snared individual male, which we removed the snare about a month ago, I got a, a reported sighting of them two days ago, just south of Pridelands on the. Hopefully, they're coming way. back for a visit. Hopefully, <laughs> coming back for a visit. I hope that's, so. I mean, and that's one thing that's so amazing about once you remove that wire sort of infringement, this their ability to recover. As soon as you get that wire off, they recover straight away. And so, yeah, I've got good good um, visual of that male two days ago and recovering well I mean on the time or at the time with with Ben and Joel um, it was cut, cutting, cutting into, into the trachea oh. breathing through a, or he was breathing rather through a hole in the in the in the trachea and um, but as soon as you remove that snare stitch that hole up the their hardiness and their ability to respond from that once they've gotten treatment is unbelievable and two days ago I saw them running around on the tar mm. road just to the south of Pride Lands and that's another individual Visual dog man. that we've managed to save now Grant's a very modest chap so I'm gonna blow some smoke <laughs> in his general direction now the hood spray general area is probably the highest densities of dogs in South Africa at the moment. Yeah, so particularly because, so the, and it's a question that often gets asked, so I've been, I mean, many of your followers will know that I've been researching the, the greater Kruger wild dog population since 2009. And when I started in 2009, the population had declined to about 120 adults. I remember. Oh. Yeah, so that was the lowest point. Uh, the highest point of the population before that was in around 1995, which there were 435 adults identified in that census. And then since we have been looking at human wildlife conflict, which obviously links to last weekend as well, and snaring, and the various threats that wild dogs face, and we've obviously spoken previously about disease and canine stemper and rabies coming into the population. So those are the three sort of main anthropogenic focuses that we're working on. But since working on those threats and, and researching the population and there were introductions into Northern Kruger and there were introductions into Belule and Reed Spreits, uh, moving wild dogs from 
sort of high threat areas, the population has actually increased to the point where now we're very close to that 435. About it's 400, incredible. Yeah, it's, in, it's amazing. In, it's been I mean, it's about now, 25 years. Yeah, exactly. 25 years to get back to where they were. And that's that's only in the Kruger population. Yes. So Endangered Wildlife Trust also runs the the range expansion project, which and then Gorongosa, which has popped up uh, sort of on our radar recently, which through three various introductions, that wild dog population has increased to over 50 individuals. Oh, that's amazing. And they're doing incredibly well. They've had numerous pups. And, and so that's what's happening in the population outside of the Western Boundary as well. Because they're doing well in Kruger, they're starting to push outside of the Western Boundary, which unfortunately, which, you know, it's often a question, and I think, Yuka, you mentioned it as a question, is it a benefit to the wild dogs or a negative? But more dogs generally means more ge genetic and, variety. And you know? more so the more dogs you have, the more genetic variety you have. And then fortunately, despite the sort of obvious human wildlife conflict issues outside the Western Boundary, the highest or the, the, the highest percentage or, or statistical threat to wild dogs is still lions. Yeah. So outside of the Western Boundary, they're able to flourish because the absence of that Density of lions or density of competing uh, predators, hyenas, leopards. lions, leopards. So it's on these isolated farms which have got a high density of prey as well. So it's literally a wild dog haven for, and it happened in Lapalala uh, as well. There you, know? you go. So Lapalala oh, puppies. The Lapalala pups up here, you know. So, <laughs> you know, the Lapalala do dogs are flourishing outside of protected areas because they've got a high density of prey and a low density of competing predators. Which makes my life and your life more difficult <laughs> when we try and catch them. Exactly. When they're incredibly skittish. That pack we, last weekend. Couldn't, exactly. You couldn't get close to them. Couldn't, I mean, so I went there 27 times and the closest I got to the pack was about 40, 50 meters away. Sure. And in terms of the ability to dart Dance. a wild dog, you need to be within 15 to 20 meters mm. of that dog standing stationary before it's even a, applicable to take the risk. Yeah. Unless you've got a helicopter. So when we put the collar on the dog, which was a necessity in order us to track the pack, and, you know, and that's a question that, that people always ask as well, is these GPS tracking collars or tags, for, yes. for lack of a better word, it, 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 you tag the dog because that individual has now got a unique collar which you can track. track. Exactly. But of course we can also uniquely identify every single wild dog Just by their coat patterns. So we see even, I mean obviously it's professionally done. <laughs> Brent's makeup here is slightly worse off than Yuka's makeup, <laughs> and that's because Yuka did her own makeup and Brent did his own makeup. No, fortunately we had someone helping us today, but yeah, I, I, I can't. Still a, Yuka's still a better looking wild dog. Yes, you you kept scratching. I kept scratching. <laughs> You've been pretty much stuck in a snare because you keep scratching yourself. <laughs> You've got a wire around your neck and it's just, oh, it's influencing it's your... Okay, Yuka does have a floppy ear, but yeah. that's actually something that's also linked to genetics of wild dogs. Yeah, if there's poor genetics in a pack of wild dogs, often you get this floppy ear. And it often happens in domestic dogs as well. Like yes. a floppy ear dog, which is, it's almost a, a secondary infection that they get in the ears and then it flops over. So the overall benefit in the increase of wild dogs is always genetic variability, which is also what Endangered Wildlife Trust works to you with the Lapalala dogs in the Boma, uh, increasing range expansion into Gorongosa, the increase in population of Kruger is the increase is beneficial for the increase in genetic variability. And so they're it, asking about the snake cookie. The, what kind of snake is it? Like it's just a wire or barbed, barbed no, wire? No, so uh, yeah, it's not barbed wire. It's it's the Afrikaans term for it is blow draught, which is is just a blue thin, steel, yeah, blue steel wire. So mm -hmm. it's galvanized wire that is tied around, uh, which forms a noose. And, and that's what they use. It's incredibly um, hardy material because of the fact that it's galvanized, so it doesn't rust in rain, it doesn't weather easily. And because it's so thin, it actually cuts through very easily, which is, is part of the yeah, problem with wild issue, dogs. Yeah. Now I see there's some incredible co uh, comments coming here. Thank you, Steffi, Janet, Rachel, Mary for Wild. Um, <laughs> Dizzy says, I like floppy ears. You can flick them. <laughs> and make them. <laughs> um, so now, obviously, we're not going to go. We've got a whole month of wild dog stuff sure. coming. So we're we're going to we're going to slow down. But one of the really exciting things that we're going to be working on with Grant, and and, and this goes into what we're going to be doing next year as well, when the world hopefully opens up, is travel for purpose. 
um, and uh, we're going to be hoping that over this month we're going to be drawing as much attention to the plight of the wild dogs and the human wild dog conflict um, in our, our area particularly and I mean this is all over Africa that they face these problems and uh, we're going to be doing a live event we don't know the exact dates we're going to be collaring uh, a wild dog live um, probably the last either the last week of November or the first week of December so we're going to need your help um, and obviously a lot of places have been absolutely hit by COVID there's no tourists and a lot of the conservation organizations are generally funded by that so what we're going to do is over this month um, we're going to start selling tickets um, for this uh, live live event um, and it's going to be very 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 exciting and um, as I say we can't wait to do it and then as I said once the world opens up we're going to start putting together safaris where you can actually go out tracking with Grant for a day of your safari you can go see the packs um, that you've seen saved here and helped here on Painted Dog and uh, it's going to be a really, really thing and obviously um, a portion of your safari will go directly to the KNP Wild Dog Project which is what Grant has been running and uh, we must say ever so successfully just look at the numbers of the dogs we've got in this area. No exactly so it has been successful and then you know something that Brent and I have spoken about is the fact that you can never plan some of these emergency things, Exactly. You know? And that's where Brent and I have spoken about is I mean even last weekend where the night before the capture I was planning it with Brent and was like, look Brent, we have to leave at 3 o'clock tomorrow morning because we have to set up the bomers and we have to leave early, And but we should be done by 12, so yes. you'll have enough. <laughs> I had a meeting, I had to cancel my, <laughs> you my canceled meeting. You cancelled the meeting and you had your, your live safari at 4 o'clock yeah. in the afternoon. We went straight. <laughs> we went and you will uh, you and we'll 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 dive. Yeah, yeah. animal will dive. And I said to Brent, no, I'm sure we'll be done by 4 o'clock, you know, it's, yeah. we're going to set up the bomers. And I mean, I don't even think it was something that you mentioned last week. No. Is, is while we were busy setting up the bombers, uh, Bruce uh, McDonald. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so this is something that wasn't mentioned. But Bruce McDonald spotted another three wild dogs that had literally just broken out or moved through the fence of Balule. Really? And they were on the R40. And he was like, I've got three wild dogs on the R40. And we R40. thought it was the same ones. We thought it was the same ones. So we, we jumped in the chopper. Yeah, we jumped in the chopper and raced out there to go and find them. I had the telemetry equipment with me. I was tracking them and I was like, no, Brent, these are not the same dogs. This is, I'm not picking <laughs> wow, up any signal. I didn't know that yeah, I about this that. Is, yeah, that day was crazy. crazy. <laughs> and the thing is, or, or, you know, just to add to it, is so many of these things are on the spur of the moment or on the on the on the cusp of the eve to save these wild dogs and and you know that's where the your viewers and your patrons have been so amazing with helping thank you out guys with, yeah and really thank really, you and uh, I mean, I've been even just the, sharing it and, sharing and just spreading the word is and incredibly it happened with important. The Lala Lala it's happened with the Melitas. The Melitas, exactly. You know, so all of that, and and hopefully over the next month, so Wild Dog or Painted Dog November, we can build up the, the sort of excitement it's, about what are we what what are we wanting to do, and sort of the, the plans for the future with EWT and and Painted Dog TV. And the first TV. ever, another world first. The world's first ever live wild dog wild coloring. Painted dog coloring. Painted dog coloring. <laughs> painted dog coloring. Painted dog. It's going to be very, very exciting. Now, we do have a, a very exciting little trailer prepared for you. So, uh, have a look at this. been following the, the dogs since first light this morning. They've given us a massive run around. They've already killed an impala. Good morning from a misty Lapalala wilderness. We are very, very excited to be here for the release the live release of the Lapalala pack of dogs. Uh, we've relocated the dogs. It looks like they've already made a kill.
So there we go, guys. That is um, Painted Dog Month. And so, I feel like that, that, those images weren't even a month in the life of Painted Dog. No. <laughs> Not even close. Not even. But we're going to be taking you deep into Painted Dogs. Uh, we're going to be having lots of special guests. We're going to get um, Joel and Ben. And ben. Joel, yeah. uh, hopefully we can convince Jerry yeah. um, to, uh, to pop out. So we're going to be doing having lots of guests all focused on, on, on the dogs. You're going to meet the team that go out to help save these dogs when the emergencies happen. So it's going to be very, very interesting. So get ready for a very exciting month. Um, and of course, it's been absolutely wonderful uh, having Grant here, as always. Thank you for having me. It's going to be mean, exciting. I mean, obviously, I'm excited about yeah. Painted Dog Month. <laughs> and remember, hashtag part of the pack. Part of the pack. Hashtag yeah, part of the like pack. That, yeah. So if anyone is going to be p posting about the dogs, hashtag part of the pack. So very, very exciting. Uh, my, I'm going to be in trouble with Zander because my computer's done and I've lost my running order. I should have charged my... Ah, there we go. Thank you very much. So we do have one last thing for you. Thank you so much, Grant. Thank you, Yuka. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're very, very excited. Oh, no, wait. I nearly forgot. Grant, what is the best who call you've heard from a human? That I've done or... No, that you've heard from anyone else. I don't know if he's. I don't know if he's ever been on the show, but uh, it's a friend of ours from Hoodsbrett, and yeah. it's a kind of like a. I mean, the who call always gets for the first time safari go gets confused it, between an owl yes. or a dove. <laughs> or like that's kind of that. a. So Mark Grover Oops. is actually. Oh really? Yeah, he's done a. He does a very good who call. Now I accidentally found what I think is the best who call in the low files. <laughs> It so, cannot be Yuka. And I, finally! And then no, you so, so what happened was, Yuka cooked us a Japanese meal the other night. And um, generally when I cook or anyone else, you scream, FOOD! <laughs> the pack must come. She who called? No, she can't say food. I said food and then people were making fun of me. My Japanese So now shout, uh, shout, shout, shout. I said, food! <laughs> no, food! 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 food. 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 That's perfect. Well, the hookah. Yeah, now it's like a hookah. Yeah, so that's how we go for dinner. Well, that's the explanation. There we go. Yeah. How do you do a wild dog hookah? Food. Food in Japanese. Japanese. <laughs> oh, <a>, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, sorry, you can But again, <laughs> uh, for those, um, I think there are some seats available on next week's uh, live private safaris. And here are the highlights from the last ones. And we will see you next month for Painted Dog Month. Bye. Bye. <laughs>